Looking back at the chunky pixels and the chirping chiptune of the 80s, you know, it's really hard to believe that video games have come so far as to even be talked about in the same sentence as movies. You know, let alone being considered as a comparable form of entertainment and art, right? We could have killed you. <laughs> oh, wow. Maybe you should have. But between today's games, you know, realistic facial animations, outstanding performances from actors, and larger-than-life set pieces, there are plenty of games that have stepped into the summer blockbuster territory. Considering games and film are both largely visual media, I mean, it makes sense that we see a ton of crossover in their form, you know, their styles and their content. But how exactly have games borrowed from the film industry over the years? What's going on, Pro Guys family? I'm Keith Allen, and today we're gonna to be exploring just how games have learned from the silver screen and what they've done to put their own spin on the Hollywood formula. It seems that as soon as the technology was advanced enough, developers were ready to start bringing storytelling to life in the interactive medium. Thus, the cutscene was born which is not only the most widely used form of storytelling in games, but it also bears the most resemblance to film in terms of how it is consumed. The 1980 arcade classic Pac-Man is widely considered to be the first game to ever feature a cutscene, which was in this case used to introduce a player to various characters of the game. Today, it might not seem like much, but at the time, was one of the first times players were asked to think of these little pixelated avatars on the screen as real characters, which is a pretty big deal. For the rest of the decade, games stuck closer to interactive novels when it came to storytelling, with players reading most of the story rather than seeing, hearing, or playing it. It was the arcade era, so developers spend most of their time focusing on gameplay design and getting as many quarters from players as they could rather than any sort of story. There were a few cinematic standouts of the time, however, such as the animated adventure game Dragon's Lair from 1983, which used hand-drawn animation both in-game and in cutscenes to convey the story. Other than those few titles, the line between game and film had yet to be blurred. <laughs> This was until the 90s hit, which is also known as the cutscene era. Games that came out in the 90s were defined by long stretches of gameplay bookended by long cutscenes. In this way, story sections of games always felt like a reward for beating difficult sections of the game. Earlier titles from series like Final Fantasy, Metal Gear, and Resident Evil seemed to fit this formula. In this era, it was also the easiest to see how games were hoping to take the best of what they could from films. First-person shooters were also on the rise at the same time as the action movie boom. So games readily took various themes and tropes, such as the grizzled lone wolf soldier with the heart of gold. Game over. In the mid-2000s, graphics, animation, and the performances from the actors only continued to improve. With these improvements, games looked more and more realistic, which developers used to their advantage. Spatial animations in particular were more natural looking and nuanced, meaning actors could get across much more complex emotional beats than they could have in years prior. But I haven't forgotten my other mission either. Helping you out. Follow this cave and go up the ladder at the end. 2007 was a huge year for cinematic leaning games, as it was the year the first Uncharted game was released. Uncharted was a pretty big deal for a few reasons. For one, the visuals were like unlike anything anybody had ever seen. Not only were the performances like something that you'd see in a movie, but the way the cutscenes were filmed were more dynamic and mirrored cinematic techniques that had been popular for decades. In addition, the game openly embraced its influences from film, specifically the Indiana Jones movies. Uncharted seemed to ask, you love that charming, adrenaline junkie of a treasure hunter, don't you? Well, how would you like to be a swashbuckling treasure hunter yourself? Sure, I mean, the game didn't exactly reinvent the wheel with the shooting stealth, 
and the platforming mechanics, but the beauty of Uncharted was that it knew exactly what it was. It was an interactive take on an action movie, and Naughty Dog did better than anyone. The Uncharted series stood out when it came to the lovable characters and the set pieces, which ironically enough, is often the appeal of summer blockbusters. Even how games are marketed nowadays is eerily reminiscent of the film industry, especially in the mainstream. The trailers are explosive, bombastic, and usually set to a dramatic cover of a well-known pop song. Side by side, it can be hard to tell which trailer is for a video game and which is for an action blockbuster. <laughs> That's all real pretty, but what the hell's it mean in English? Many studios follow Naughty Dog's lead, like Rockstar, with their now classic hit Red Dead Redemption in 2010, which drew heavily from old westerns. Another series of note is God of War, which already seemed to borrow from cinematic techniques before it rebooted to look even more like it jumped off of a film screen. Uncharted also marked the rise of performance capture. Traditionally in games, the recording of an actor's lines and their movements were done separately, and sometimes even by different actors altogether. This meant that performances felt disjointed and a little uncanny. See, when Drake discovered something on that voyage, Sully, something so secret and so valuable, they couldn't risk it getting out. All right, Nate, just pretend for a minute that I don't really care about any of that stuff and cut to the chase, would you? <sighs> With the introduction of performance capture, however, the actor's voice, facial, and body movements were all captured at the same time, making for all-around improved and more believable acting. Uncoincidentally, shooting a scene for a game suddenly looked a lot like shooting a scene for a movie, except for the lack of costumes, sets, and props. And the more realistic, the more impressed the industry seems to be. For years, games with a photorealistic art style have swept award shows, like especially in the best narrative and game of the year categories. The pattern seemed to speak for itself. I mean, we already love movies, so why wouldn't we just jump in and just play around them? On the flip side though, not everybody is thrilled with the slow shift to more movie-like games, with some saying that games from narrative-focused studios like Naughty Dog or Don't Not should just make movies if they want to tell linear stories. The argument is that video games are the only interactive storytelling medium, and a game isn't really a game if it doesn't take advantage of that. While there has indeed been a push to include more story content in the actual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, developers have incorporated such content to mix results. Some games have either used existing gameplay mechanics to convey the story. For example, Naughty Dog games are known for their sometimes clunky environmental puzzles, which often include moving a crate or a ladder so you can just climb to the next area. In The Last of Us, however, the game subverts player expectations by using this mechanic to highlight how one of the characters is feeling. Oh my god. Oh. What is it? Ellie! Ellie! You see this? I won't, I won't. What are you doing? It's all right. Come here. Come here. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Some games have even taken a step further by creating their own mechanics to tell stories, such as dating or community simulators that use gift giving to symbolize the strengthening of a relationship. So it's easy to take highly sophisticated graphics and animation for granted now, but we have to remember that when games were still getting their start, players couldn't dream of having something that looks like what we have today. Back then, it was impressive enough to just have characters who looked like they were speaking as they were saying lines. This novelty both held players' interest and kept people pushing for more and more improvements all the time. The excitement of seeing realistic people replicated on a screen kept developers pushing for the next big breakthrough in photorealistic graphics. However, now that games have more or less achieved or photorealistic art style, this novelty is wearing off. This is because in trying to make a game as much like a movie as possible, you also have to sacrifice certain things that make a game. For example, in providing the player a highly polished linear experience, you have to give up certain aspects of player agency. Every encounter has to be played in the exact way the developer wanted you to. Otherwise, it's an immediate game over. Hold it! Hold it! 
So this lack of agency is understandably frustrating for some players who are playing a game under the pretense that their interaction with it matters. At the same time, when developers try to implement a story beat through gameplay, it often doesn't work out. Specifically, the usual tactics for getting players on the stick include mechanics like quick time events during scripted sequences, or the dreaded slowly follow NPC as they spew expositionally dialogue at you. For his sake, he better. Look, once we get our merchandise back, it should be easy to unload. Well, speaking of merchandise, when's that next shipment due? Oh, we're meeting Bill next month. More pills, lots of ammo, supposedly. While these are good attempts at helping a player feel more engaged, they mostly ring hollow, as players can tell they don't require any mastery or understanding of the game to get through them. A perfect example of difficulties with creating a cinematic game is something as simple as where the camera is pointed. In film, what the camera sees is a huge part of the storytelling. So a specific placement and movement is crucial. Cinematographer didn't used to be a job that existed in games, but now it's incredibly important for these cinematic games. As opposed to film though, the player is in charge of the camera's movement, except for a few stylistic exceptions. The obvious problem with the player-controlled camera is that you never know where they're going to look, which wouldn't be a problem with many games. But with linear cinematic games, developers often know exactly where they want the camera pointed. And from there, there are two options. Either they force the camera to look at the important story beat, or you can miss it entirely. These instances don't feel great to play and further push against what makes games what they are, the player's ability to control what's happening on screen. And while that can lead to a whole philosophical debate about what really constitutes a game and whether something that doesn't challenge you is worth playing at all, we don't really need to get into that. The point here is that cinematic games have been an important and beloved, albeit controversial, part of the video game landscape. Cinematic games often remind us why we love playing games in the first place. They let us slip into another world and just live in it with characters we love. The worst of the genre can be pretty bad, sure, but the best of it can be thrilling. I mean, awe-inspiring, sometimes even life-changing. This stuff is high risk, high reward more so than any other types of game development, and we're lucky that we get to benefit from those rewards. Titles with a focus on gameplay like Tetris or Dark Souls aren't going anywhere soon, but sales and awards have proven that there really is a market for cinematic games. It's understandable that these issues can be frustrating for players, but at the end of the day, there's something out there for you no matter what you prefer your gaming experience to look like. The beauty of the industry is that it's big enough to accommodate any number of interests and playstyles. So what do you think of cinematic games? What moment from a game made you feel most like you were in a movie? And are you excited to see where cinematic games are going in the future? Let us know in the comments below. All right, guys, thank you again, Pro Guys family. I am Keith Allen, your motivation guy, and I'll see you soon.